Hmm. Yeah, it's looking okay. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Look at all those logos. I'm back and I got that DD for you. Now the company I'm looking at is a five time global cloud partner winner, as well as a Microsoft partner that is making strides, hitting waves, crashing, making changes in the world of the digital transformation that is of the 2020 Rona. Because one person, one person won't wear a mask. Uh, situation, but they got products and security, data migration. They found themselves a little niche in that transformation, governance and compliance. So that space is real niche, but looking real good, especially for some incidents that have occurred in the last few months. ...that you believe that's now been exposed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or... Now, we should probably talk about that and why Jeffrey Epstein's little brother is interested. Hmm. What is APXT? It's a SPAC, a reverse merger, and they're merging with Avpoint. Now, why is this exciting? Well, Avpoint has found themselves in a very particular niche, and this niche is Microsoft migrations, transport of data, backups, a lot of things to do with Office 365. And this is very important, well, now into 2021, because back in December, December 14th specifically, SolarWinds, a company that is used for monitoring a lot of platforms, uh, infrastructure, a lot of technology, and you know, if something fails, it'll let you know. A lot of the news is saying that it was Russians. Realistically, there's a small group of individuals who are saying it came from within the US. But we can put that aside. I'm not gonna point fingers. I don't know who did it. They still don't know who did it. They're still investigating. But for the fact of the matter is actually the way that it was done. It was very, very well executed. It was over a course of potentially the whole year of 2020, uh, or maybe over a course of eight to six months, where what they did is they found a way into SolarWinds through some means of, mm, I'm not gonna go into the details, it's very technical, but somebody broke into SolarWinds, updated their code at the right time as they were deploying a new version for their customers, who might as well be the most sensitive individuals on the planet, a lot of them are just regular corporations, SaaS companies, other companies that use technology, but a big bulk of them, and I think this was their main focus point, were government organizations, different entities that were using SolarWinds for their own solutions. System breach, oh. firewall one. We got a problem. What? Someone synced a rat to one of my servers, a remote access tool, we're being hacked. <laughs> I'll start an intrusion inspection and find out who our rat is. <sighs> yeah, our government got hacked because they updated their software. So very similar to you downloading an app and then a month later it's saying, you can't use it, go ahead and update it from the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. Same concept, the only difference is on a grander scale. They added some code to it and it was able to give them a backdoor into a lot of these companies that use that product. So all their customers welcomed the hack and installed it and didn't even check. This is a has to do a lot with just how SolarWinds was able to uh, review their code and audit and do any sort of testing. There wasn't a layer of security involved. But this issue became prevalent because now that is how they got into Office 365 and their supported use of it, uh, installed locally or outside, because what they did is they gave themselves access, usually by the means of creating your own user with whatever password you want or finding out the users and their passwords in the system. So what ended up happening? Well, a lot of places got hacked, a lot of emails were leaked, a lot of information's out in the air, and people still don't know the grand scheme of what was taken, who was affected, and realistically out of the 30,000, the, sorry, the 33,000 customers that were announced, we still don't know who specifically was affected. But we know that a lot of the government officials were affected because they found a lot of that information did leak. Why is that important for Avpoint? Well, they sell security monitoring and security compliance uh, tools for Office 365. So much so that the breach and the announcement of that breach occurred on December 14th, 
of 2020. And four days after, they come out with a tip for protecting Microsoft 365 and Salesforce data case study. I don't know if it was well-timed from their marketing and PR team, but absolutely beautiful. Being able to use the case study from Vision Austria on how they were able to protect their Office 365 and leverage a lot of their governance and compliance solutions. A lot of people online were telling me, I'm insane. Why would I put my money into APXT? They're gonna tank. I told them, yeah, they're gonna tank because of individuals like you who don't understand what's happening. They're actually gonna benefit from this because they sell a product for this. This is the best marketing scheme to find an actual use case, a project, or something to attach their product to, to deliver value. They're gonna make more money. They're gonna acquire more customers just from this scenario, this issue that has occurred to a large group of American government and business organizations. All right, in typical Eddie Carr fashion, we're gonna do some due diligence and we're gonna start off with the SEC AK. Uh, this is my favorite portion because it's just the company telling me everything that I need to know up front. It, it includes all their financials. It also includes presentations usually toward the bottom of the document. We're just gonna focus on the investor presentation that they deploy with the AK filing. Okay, here's the uh, AK filing. This is what we're gonna be reviewing. It is just immaculate. Everything that I thought that it would be because they, they pick such an interesting niche. It's a, it's a field between the on-premise traditional environments of Windows, Microsoft technologies, and their new Azure cloud platform. Right, so Avpoint, the, like I mentioned before, they're a five-time global partner of, uh, of the year with um, Azure, right? So they've been working pretty hard to get people into the cloud and making it as easy, manageable, and being able to you know, control their governance, their compliance, their security access, but also be able to maintain and manage all that data that they have, right? So you're thinking, you know, like SharePoint files, that, years upon years of data being able to be easily transitioned into the cloud for the Office 365 solution. So right here, what we have in the beginning, we have the transaction uh, description. It's essentially that they're combining. Uh, APXT is going to combine and do a full merge so that they can take over their place on the stock market. Uh, this is a $2 billion market capitalization. This right here is super key. This $2 billion market capitalization means their ownership of this particular market. $2 billion for a merger like this, we're gonna be seeing APXT turning into their new ticker of AVPT. It says here in the first quarter of 2021, but here on Twitter, you're actually gonna see that somebody just blindly asked them, when is the merger gonna occur? Well, they, they said they have expectations of it to be February of 2021. As long as the SEC completes the review and their filings and everything is uh, legal, we should be able to see a merger very soon. And this is actually what's affecting the stock price right now. I was talking about this on my Instagram, look it up and follow me. I always post what we have in our Discord channel, also link down below. I got in around 1370 and my average is right now around 1477 and I own 400 shares. And here we have existing Avpoint shareholders will be paid 257 million. The MM is multi-millions in cash consideration and issued 143.4 multi-millions in shares in new Avpoint shares. Because this is a purchase transaction of who's gonna be getting money so that they can buy those shares at a certain price, obviously. There'll be an offering. And then there's the merger that occurs so that Avpoint can take over APXT's uh, place in the market. Now, as we scroll down through this, uh, obviously a majority of this is just explaining who's gonna be involved, what's happening. I really wanna get into the governance. This is key. Uh, the, my comment about Jeffrey Epstein's little brother, well, it just so happens that the co-CEO and CFO of Apex Technology Corp, or sorry, Apex Technology Acquisition Corp, is also sharing the name of Jeff Epstein. Uh, it's mostly comical. I don't think there's any actual relation but the operating partner at Bessemer Venture um, Partners, he's been advised over 100 portfolio companies, daily interactions, CEOs and CFOs, served on 20 boards. Uh, this is the board of directors for companies, the people who go for advice, but also to declare or uh, make decisions based on the company's success or what direction they're going. This is 
incredible because this guy's been CFO of Oracle, Nielsen, King World, DoubleClick, a lot of organizations that handle large masses amount of money, but also places where they've seen a lot of growth, a lot of direction um, in the technology space. So he has a really nice professional career. And then if you start going down further, he's got some nonprofit board experience. He's got public company board experience for things like Twilio, massive company. And then Booking Holdings, another one that's holding its weight. As you can see, 1 billion in 2003, but in 2019, over 80 billion that it's been able to increase 80X. And then the other co-CEO, Brad Cohen, uh, this guy's just like, if, if there's a financial, uh, like a military jacket of like badges you could apply to somebody, this guy's got it. Like look at it, Microsoft, this guy's already got existing partnerships, probably friends, people he used to work with as coworkers. He's got eBay, massive company, Sybase, pretty good company there, Yahoo, PowerSoft, Dell, very, very important, especially when you're looking at the computer space and seeing where else they could fit, especially Dell bought a cloud company a couple years ago, and they're looking to grow into that cloud offering as well for their space. So there might be some future holdings there. Then we got Oracle, there's Oracle Cloud. So I can see these partnerships, not only through this merger, but also opening doors for them for other product, other growth into other parts of the industry, places that don't necessarily have many solutions. Now, I'm not gonna go into uh, detail for the entirety of their investor presentation. I'm gonna take out the highlights, the pieces that made uh, me a little bit more interested in APXT and the AffPoint merger. I'll put a link down below to this report. This is for the SEC website. It's a government website, so it's publicly available. Um, this is also something you guys should probably get in, you know, pretty comfortable with, reading 8Ks, 10Ks, 403Bs, all of that information gives you some really good insight on like insider trading, you know, who's purchasing, um, information is being announced, as well as being able to read somebody's financial information uh, as they're doing, doing their earnings call. Uh, super key information, and what's best, what's best about all this is usually it's all released a day before the news breaks out, so you get a little bit of headwind on what exactly is happening, um, you know, before the regular people who don't know how to read SE, SEC forms. That's right. It's that time again. Roll the clip. Oh shit, no, that's me. Hey everybody, getting up a close personal with you. It's your favorite time and mine. It's time to talk about money. Money, 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 more money. Money. All right. And I'm here at my next point. This is literally where the money's at, both figuratively and quite literally. Um, as we look here, what we're looking at is essentially kind of like their plan of what's going to be the next steps, what's going to grow, what, you know, what their expectancy is and where they're at at this moment. Uh, the first one here is super key to me, TAM growth to 33 billion for you know, at least by 2020. Um, reading this, and if you're not familiar with the sales space or technology um, and how software is sold, TAM is technical account manager. That's what that stands for there. And they're looking to grow that part of their business to over 33 billion by 2022. Uh, the goal of that is not to sell to new customers, but to grow and offer new services and solutions and sell to existing customers. Uh, mind you, they are a SaaS solution, so there is a monthly recurring or annually recurring um, cost to using their solutions. So I can see this being a super power play um, as they grow into their existing accounts and then as they also gather new clients into the solutions that they have now and solutions that they're working on for the future. Um, for me, that, that just shows great leadership, uh, that they understand that their customers like their product and that there's other things that their customers are letting them know about that maybe they're requesting through feature requests or uh, you know just pains and issues that they're experiencing and they're letting uh, Avpoint and their technical account managers know about and bringing it back to their engineering team so they can build these things that they can eventually sell off right back to their customers. That's super key. It almost sounds like it's a company that's really customer first um, focused. Well, look, I already told you, I deal with the goddamn customers so the engineers don't have to. I have people skills. I am good at dealing with people. Can't you understand it? What the hell is wrong with you people? All right, next piece here is the large established global presence. This is where they are. This is the, the organization that they've built over this period of time from start to right now going into the public domain. They have over 1300 employees and 29 global offices. That's a really good reach. It's a good start right before you wanna go public. You wanna have a large enough basis because going public not only brings 
uh, potential cash flow for you know reinvesting into the business with this large of an employee base not only are they creating jobs but they're also offering a global standpoint of being available so they'll be actually able to have essentially a, a space where any customer in any part of the world can communicate to someone um, at this company and get them you know some assistance new product gain new customers in different parts of the world they won't be stuck to a particular pool of individuals using Microsoft services, you know, like just in the US, maybe South America, Latin America, EMEA, or, you know, like Africa, you know, the Southern Africa is actually booming right now in technology. So I can see this being really beneficial. And, you know, being able to grow that 7 million cloud user base, which is 16,000 accounts, that's, that's a really solid start right there because I can see that growing even further. There's so many people who use Microsoft products um, especially Microsoft 365 and how popular it has become. Now, as we scroll down here, we have compelling growth vectors. Um, this is just places that they're looking to reinvest their money, reinvest their efforts and their time. Uh, R&D, you know, driving increased product line, what they're trying to invest their TAM team to be able to do. Take all those new products, all those new solutions and redistribute and resell to their existing customers who have the problems that they're already aware of, right? A lot of your customers, uh, let's say you own a business, right? And you have one guy coming in every day. It's like, ah, I hate Pepsi, right? Not, not my favorite soda. I really wish you had Coke. Specifically, if you had vanilla Coke, I'd love it. Well, you wouldn't necessarily go out of your way to invest a lot of money into this one person, right? But if you had a large group of customers that you could survey and say, hey, do you like vanilla Coke? If we offered it, would you come here and, and purchase? you know, regular customers of your convenience store for, you know, for this example, you could get a good idea of your regular, you know, loyal customer base and get an idea of like, okay, I got about 50 people on my regular every day is about a hundred. So about half of them are asking for vanilla Coke. If I buy about 10, you know, uh, packets or uh, I guess one pallet of vanilla Coke to be delivered to my business, I can hold some in the back, put some in the cooler and sell a majority of those on a regular basis, it's probably a well worth it investment. Same concept here for, you know, R&D, research and development into your product. Enough people are going to tell you that something sucks. We want something better. You're going to be able to have a solution that'll be able to give that to you. Now, expanding channel and distribution partners. This is that small business, um, small to medium business initiative. That's a SMB. This is where you partner up with individual channels or distribution partners. What this means is you're building communications to other businesses that resell software or you're communicating to partnerships like um, MSPs. Uh, these are individuals whose sole purpose is to offer a service to manage, maintain and uh, deploy or even be their technical team for different solutions for their company. Maybe they can't afford the engineers. Uh, maybe they don't have a method of employing some individuals in a certain region because of like country, uh, country or laws pre preventing them or maybe the investment's a little too large for that. So for SMB initiative, that's, uh, that's actually pretty key because you can have others sell for you. You can have others utilize your product as a solution, right? Because someone's gonna have to end up paying for it. Their customer will pay them to put it in and then their customer will have a little money put on top of their cost so that they can pay half point. Now, this last one, selling more to existing customers through investment in sales and customer success. That, that's very different than investing in trying to get your TAMs to get to 33 billion over the next two years into 2022. Now, what does it mean to invest right into your sales and your customer success? Well, sales, that's pre-sales. Uh, these are the individuals who are emailing, communicating, trying to use their existing contacts to break into companies, talk about the product, find their pain points, their use cases, things that will allow them to get the product into that company and ultimately sold. Right. And then we have the other side, customer success. This is the post sales uh, part of the organization. They manage the accounts. Um, you probably know them as names like account managers, somebody you have direct communication with as a customer to you know, air your grievances, ask for features and try to get some more assistance with like enablement and so forth. Um, the, this is this is screaming volumes here for me. Right. Because this means people know what they're doing. Right. Their goal is to take their TAM, their technical account manager part of the organization and grow it to 33 billion into 2022. Well, you can't do that unless you have individuals growing the company through sales because sales solves everything and owning those accounts, selling into them, uh, communicating with them, building those relationships for long term partnership 
this just means everybody knows what they're doing. They know where they need to go and they know what parts of the problem internally they need to repair or at least improve upon to at least grow their business. So having all this, it just means everything is in place and they know where they need to go. Now down here at the bottom, just it's like the footer of this document, such a like nonchalant flex. Uh, oh, in 2020, by the way, we had a really strong financial year. Yeah, we made 148 million in revenue. Mind you, this document, this AK was filed in November 23rd of 2020. So they still had December um, revenue figures to kind of have associated to this. We'll figure this out in February when they finish up the merger, but we're looking at potentially 150 million worth of revenue. And I, and I think they cleaned that up by the end of the year, especially with what occurred uh, December 14th. I could see a lot of people chasing and looking for a solution to help them with their Microsoft 365. You may notice I have less facial hair and a completely different t-shirt. I'm gonna be honest with you. I forgot to record an outro. So that's what we're doing now. So as we come closer to the end of this video, this is my attire. And as we go deeper, that's right, we're going deep. Deeper, deeper. ultra deep. deep. We're gonna start going over a few different topics, but I'm gonna just transition over to that and we can start with those and then wrap this thing up. Obviously, I've forgotten a lot of things and the video's already taking way too long. All right, we're here at the AvPoint Careers page as I always do for any company. If they're saying they're gonna invest into a different part of the organization and grow it, I wanna know if they're actually hiring people to manage it because you can get more customers, but do you have the people to take that on? I wouldn't wanna work there if I had to handle 100 accounts. That doesn't make any sense especially if I'm doing some technical work to install something, recommend something, or even if we try to do consulting companies, right? Uh, or try to offer professional services, it's, it's gonna get daunting because you can't spend too much time with each, with each customer as, as they pile on on your plate. So let's start here. So careers at Avpoint. All right, so we got sales, 31 positions, perfect. Technology, 27, that'll help out with that TAMS, it'll help out with the R&D, you, know, you need developers to build software. Then we got marketing, five positions, legal, four, people operations, three, that makes sense. And then here, finance, six positions. I would expect a little bit more as they're going public. Um, when you go public, there's a lot more scrutiny on the things that you're doing with your company and what you're doing with your money. It's no longer private, so you can't just like hide that information and report it directly to the government when taxes come along, either every quarter or every year, depending on your uh, incorporation. I would expect more, but six is fine, I guess. Um, they probably already have a pretty built out financial part of the organization as you know, the CFO and the C CEO are past financial experts. Uh, so they, they probably have years of experience in that area and they already built that part out. Then we got product uh, and product management, two positions. I don't, you know, I'm not really happy about that, especially when we're hiring uh, 27 positions in technology. Right, so if we dive deeper in here, uh, technology. All right, so here what we see is the list of positions. So we have .NET Developer, yep, SharePoint and CRM Admin, perfect. But you wanna notice is this point here that their global reach, that they're also trying to increase. Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, Singapore. They got Australia, obviously, parts in the US. They they started in the US. Uh, they got Paris, France, Netherlands. These guys are going global and they're really outreaching to everything. But here we go, customer success manager, customer success manager. We got cloud SaaS software engineer, perfect. R&D, R&D, uh, Microsoft 365 strategic consultant. Let's see here, uh, QA engineer, sales engineer. They're going for cheap because uh, globally, uh, Vietnam is on the lower side of pay scale, but still still reasonable for that part of the world. Uh, oh, and they got, they're going into Japan. That's gonna be a tough one. The Japan is very unique in the way that they do business. You, you, I think it's a good move if they're gonna move into Japan to actually open up shop there as well with an office. Um, this is good. I like this. More support, there you go. Deeper, deep. ultra deep. Now, we've gone over the careers page. We've, we've gone through some of their job descriptions. Now, I want to know more, not from the Avpoint or the merger or APXT. I wanna know about their customer. I wanna know, do they care? What's this product like? Do they hate it? Do they love it? Do they have to live with it? Or do they want to live with it? Right? Uh, good software gets reviews. Bad software, you hear, you hear the people's voices. 
So let's go through those and get an idea of what's inside of a customer's head and if this product makes sense going forward. They, be, they may be making a lot of money, but if there's a high churn from these customers moving to other products or maybe open source technology, well, we got a problem and they're just really good at turning new customers and maybe they're leaving them overall. So let's see how they've done over the past couple years and see how they've been doing the last couple months. And let's make that review. All right, I did some digging on Reddit. You gotta love people, man. You gotta love engineers who love to hate. Metalogix versus Afpoint uh, for replication, migration. Uh, you know, which one, why? Any horror stories about either product? Now let's look at the replies. Uh, key piece here you wanna look at, there is Metalogix replicator, which no one should ever implement. Pretty good. We're starting off with competition. All right, here's one post. Uh, we tried both and ultimately went with Avpoint and have no regrets. It wasn't that Metalogix was a bad product, it's that the company was really flaky with regards to setting and keeping meeting appointments. That's a bad look, man. Uh, you should probably be on top of your game if you're trying to sell software. Uh, they also were not quite as accessible and friendly when we had questions and Fpoint was hands down the better company. They seem to have a much better support system in place. So if they have this four years ago locked, it can only get better from here. But let's continue. Maybe there's something bad. Maybe there's something more that we need to look into. Oh, and a quick reply right below. They were not quite accessible and friendly when we had questions. We've got no experience with Fpoint, but this is the absolute truth about Metalogix. Again, trashing on the competition. This one's from two years ago. Avpoint is the worst. Okay, uh, oh my God, I have had the worst experience with these guys. I have never encountered such sleazeballs. Interesting. Uh, in the IT industry as Avpoint. They sell me a product, let me fonder for a year, then come back to say, oh, I'm sorry we didn't give you any support, but you got lost in our system. Here, renew for 100% of what you paid last year so you can recover access to the product you've, been, <laughs> you've bought and we'll give you access to technical support this time. That, I understand that some companies could have some issues in the back end where maybe somebody got lost in translation or maybe transitioning from one, you know, from the pre-sales to the post-sales side was a little shoddy. Uh, the worst is trying to remove this cancer of a software from your farm. Okay, so we probably have some like legitimate uh, feedback here. We didn't have success with them either. And it looks like somebody else here is recommending some other competing software. ShareGate for the win. ShareGate is fantastic product. Okay, you got two individuals saying that out. Check out for ShareGate IPO, maybe. Let's see here, for the person who actually made the post, so OP, uh, for what it's worth, I will probably be deleting this thread shortly since it apparently been effective at getting their attention. Thank you, everybody. Sadly that it had to come to this point. Social media should never be the ultimate resort or last resort for a customer to talk to a company. Uh, it should be the it, it should be the first place that nobody wants posts, comments, or reviews in a negative way or trying to get someone's attention from. It, it makes it public. It makes it very very messy. Okay, and look at Avpoint even chimed in here. As they mentioned, we have started the process working directly with her to make things right. Customer satisfaction is critical to Halfpoint, and we've liked to invite everyone who has commented here to reach out so we can see how we might be able to, to help. All right, look at that. Even Afpoint has uh, chimed into this thread. So they're aware of the social media presence. They're aware that they get spoken about on Reddit. Um, and mind you, I had to dig deep. Yeah, I had to go digging to find this stuff. But it, even on top of that, you know, Afpoint's already on it. Um, so it looks like they're trying to help and they're recommending anybody else who's commented in this thread who uses their software uh, to, to be able to hit them up and, and start the support process. So it looks like they're, they are, you know, they're, they're making advancements, they're making changes. So as we look at this next one, it's from two years ago, Avpoint made it right. Some of you may remember my little Avpoint rant due to migration frustrations that continued for months. While the issues I experienced are completely inexcusable, it's only fair that I follow up with recent happenings. Okay. After that post, uh, which I've since deleted, why I couldn't find it, uh, one of their directors followed up with me. All right, director, okay. And assigned a new tech resource who was far more educated 
in their product than the others. Okay, I think that's uh, screaming that we're doing it right. We're trying to make things right. We're trying to do good by you, a customer. Okay, that's a good sign. When I put my money into companies, I want to see growth, not only financially, but also the, the intangible things, right? Do they make their customers happy? Do customers want to buy more? Do they trust, right? I love to see this, but I love to see more of the last one where we saw someone complained and then Avpoint stepped in, right? They're involved, they know where they need to go. Not only are they able to financially grow, but they're also able to keep their customers and grow with them, right? That, that should be the ultimate goal of any business. You don't have to be a sleazeball at business. You can be a good person and still be able to make money. Uh, let's see, so there was some um, issues with the required hotfix. He pushed it a couple days, which afterward things worked. Perfect. So they came back. Uh, I feel like they should have left the original post because if they came back with this one and they just tagged the original post, because you can do that in Reddit, um, I think that would have been like a full story of bad experience and look at this. I've got myself exactly what I need. I got support and everything worked out. But very interesting that people, a little bit of fanfare here. Uh, that, that's good to see another customer's perspective chiming into this customer's perspective uh, and getting you know this information, this communication going. Um, I like that. I like I like the positivity here. I like how they're able to kind of grow. This one was from two years ago. The previous one was from two years ago. I think there was just one bad guy who just didn't know what he was doing. Probably probably pretty green on the support side and. They swapped them out with somebody else and things got better. I think this is nice. All right, that's where I'm gonna cut it for today. No more deep dives, no more analysis, no more DD for APXT. We may be seeing AVPT in the near future, so I might have some surprising updates for that one as well. And as we go through this, thanks everybody for watching. I know it's been a bit, but obviously new office, new life, that whole remote thing. Um, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Um, hope to see you guys soon. Hope to hear from you. Those comments, I definitely read them and I try to get back to every single one of them. And hit up our Discord. The link's also down below. A uh, bunch of us are kind of just learning as we go. And a lot of us senior ones are actually helping everybody else along the way. So that link down below is gonna be only 24 hours. It is a Discord server, but we're having a cap at a thousand. So get in there before there's no seats left. All right, have a good one.